Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I make fitness and lifestyle content here on YouTube. So uh, I am gonna be talking today about my fitness journey, which I don't know why it's taking me so long. I've had this channel for a year now and I have never even talked about my fitness journey over here. So I'm just gonna be going over my origins, like how did I get started? How do I feel about fitness now? What are some goals I have for the future? And just kind of walk you through where I've been. And then I'm going to actually talk a little bit about how I became a Buff Bunny Collection athlete as well. So I'll be sharing a lot of pictures before and after progress. Before we go ahead and get started in this video, go ahead and give it a like and go ahead and subscribe. I have some really exciting plans for this channel this upcoming year and I want you to be a part of it. So go ahead and join the fam. All right, let's get started. So I feel like it makes the most sense to start with kind of my upbringing and everything. Um, I have never been athletic, so I never had a propensity to be in the gym or do anything physical. Um, I did do ballet from ages like three to nine, ballet and tap, and then I transitioned into like hip hop and jazz um, from like fifth grade and sixth grade, and then in eighth grade, I did do cheerleading. Aside from that, I was never on any sports teams or really doing anything too physical. As a matter of fact, if I could pinpoint a villain origin story for me, it would be in PE because your girl was having a rough time. I was always significantly smaller than everyone else in my class, like shorter and smaller. I was about like a head and shoulder shorter than everyone in my class. And boy, did they not let me forget. So I was made fun of a lot for just being too small and that kind of did affect how my PE experience was. Whenever we would run, play basketball, play soccer, dodgeball, any of those things, when I tell you no one wanted to pick me for their team, dodgeball, first person out, basketball, hit it, getting hit in the face with the basketball, soccer, getting kicked in the stomach with the soccer ball, being the slowest, I mean, all of the things that you would just imagine in a montage of like someone having a horrible PE experience, I had that. Um, very traumatized. Um, yeah. So anything regarding sports, active, your girl was not having a fun time. So yeah, I was never into any of that. Um, I was more, you know, doing dance. Not even that I was so great at that, but... That's a little bit more my speed. Cheerleading, I did that in eighth grade and we were a really small school. Um, I tried out, but I don't even think they told anyone no. Um, good, because I would have been heartbroken. Um, but yeah, I was on the cheer squad. We didn't do flips or anything. We were very chill, you know, we just did a little bit of that. And I thought it was fun, but I really just wanted to wear the uniform. So yeah, wasn't really athletic, just super small, having a horrible time in PE. And that's pretty much how elementary school and middle school went. When I got to high school, that's when I finally was starting to really pay attention to my body and where I fit in with the other girls and all of that stuff. And that's kind of marking the beginning baby baby origins of body image and the mindset I had about what I wanted my body to look like and what I needed to do to achieve it. So when I finally got to high school, I was at a new high school and I was like looking around at all the girls and I was starting to see what it was the guys were attracted to and who's having crushes on. And that was like the first time when I realized like, okay, so you don't really have anything up here and you definitely don't have anything back there, okay, like you are at the bottom of the totem pole. And, you know, after doing research, you know, in the Googles and talking to friends, I was like, okay, so there's like really nothing I can do up top, right? Like, I mean, implants, right? But we're, I'm 14. So there's really nothing to do there. But apparently there are some exercises that I can do to amp up the glutes. Casey Ho from Blogilates. I found her YouTube channel and I was in there, okay? I was like in my bedroom on the floor, like doing her workouts. It was like donkey kicks. It was like um, 
hip, like hip thrusts, like body weight stuff. I was doing all the things. Mind you, I probably only did it for like a week straight at best. And I was like, okay, I should be seeing progress. Okay. Um, and so I was doing that because I was like, the butt is what I need. Like I need a butt. And I was just like very small, very petite. I don't know. Maybe by the time I got to high school, I was maybe finally five foot, just super short. And I definitely was probably like 90 pounds, like on a good day. Um, mind you, I also wasn't even eating (laughs) enough in high school. I pretty much had one meal a day. So I went to private school and we had to be at school like relatively early by like 7.40 or 7.45. So in the morning, I wasn't really that hungry. I was eating a Rice Krispie or something on the way to school. And then we'd have lunch. And the way our school was, it was like you paid for lunch. Like it was in part of the tuition. And so like no one really brought their lunch. You just ate the school's lunch because your parents were paying for it. And I was a super picky eater and I just did not like the school lunches. Like I was like, "Mm, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't want this. And most of the time I would just pick at my lunch. But if there was cookies being sold or I could buy candy from the vending machine or anything like that, yeah, I was doing that. Or sometimes I'd bring goldfish because that's my comfort snack of choice. I'd bring goldfish and eat that. And yeah, then I'd get home and my mom would make dinner and I'd eat my dinner and that was pretty much like all I ate in a day. So definitely not eating much to really support those gains either. And that's just kind of how it was all of high school. Um, Doing those exercises here and there, hoping and praying for this body and safe to say that I did not achieve that by the time I graduated. I figured this is just what I have. This is just like how I don't, what I'm stuck with, you know? So that was kind of like my high school experience. When I go to college, that's like finally when I see myself in an actual gym, like in a weight room. And that kind of starts like my first time getting into a gym routine and going to the gym. So in college, my roommate was a former basketball athlete from high school, actually knew her from high school. We went to the same high school for a year before she left. And she was like, girl, if you're trying to get like the glutes, if you're trying to get this body, like we need to go to the gym. We need to be lifting weights. I'm like, lifting weights, like not too much. Like, come on now, me? She's like, yeah. So we started going to our college's gym, (laughs) athletic center, the, the recreation center. And we started like doing leg days. So I remember we were doing leg press, Smith machine squats, um, like leg extensions, leg curls, and stuff like that. And that's it though. We only did, we only did legs. And I remember after our first workout, I was so sore the next day. Like I quite literally could not walk. And I was like, there's just no way, like, this is what people are doing all the time. So probably go like twice a week at best. We weren't consistent. And also, again, my eating wasn't good. I definitely was eating three meals in college, but nothing extensive. And I was eating a lot of junk. By the time I made it to like junior or senior year, I was pretty much going to the gym consistently, like three times a week. So I learned that you can't do leg day back to back. So I put a space in between. So it's like, I'd go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I learned that you need to like have a protein shake after the gym. So we had a smoothie King in our gym and I would get a strawberry and banana gladiator smoothie after my leg day every single time. And it had 45 grams of protein. And I was like, Oh yeah. I didn't know how much protein I needed or why I needed it, but everyone else was getting a protein shake after. So I was like, so I'm going to get one. So I was hooked on that gladiator, getting it after every single leg day, doing like three exercises. It was Smith machine. It was high seated leg press. And I would do, I think leg extensions and then go home. And me being a newbie beginner, I saw like, I saw a little bit of a lift back there. I was starting to get some quad definition. And so I was like, clearly like, I know what I'm doing. So that's how that went. And when I graduated from college, I did get a gym membership 
and I continued to do the same thing. I started to eat a little bit more. So I became a medical assistant after graduating and I'm on my feet all day, all day, walking, walking, walking. And that gave me a hunger, okay? Like I had an appetite finally for the first time in my life really because that's what adult work will do for you. Um, And they would sometimes, no, not sometimes, a lot of times we would have free lunch, okay? And I was starting to eat all the things. The pickiness, the picky eater, she was going away because we were having Chipotle, Gringos, um, pasta places. They would bring like an ice cream bar. I mean, we were having all the things and I was hungry because the girl was walking around all day. So I started eating and gymming and then I started to gain a little bit of weight and I was so excited. I think I finally, by the time I graduated college, I was about like 102. And then after this nine months of being a medical assistant, I was like 110 or 115. And so I was like, yeah, really having a little something, something back there. And I was super excited. But then I went to grad school and this is really where the beginning of my most current fitness journey begins. So when I get to grad school, I'm like continuing the same thing. I'm back at the gym still doing my same lifts, except now I'm throwing in a bicep curl here and there, you know, to be more well-rounded. And that was the fall semester of 2019. As I go into spring 2020, I started dating Chris and he's a big gym guy. He actually works at the gym when we were in grad school. And he's like, respectfully, you got to start doing upper body. And also you can't just keep doing these Smith machine squats. Like there's more to life than that. And I was like, respectfully, girl, leave me alone. So then we went into lockdown. And so when we were in quarantine, all I could do was like apartment, uh, dorm workouts. I was back to doing resistance bands. I was trying to do whatever I could circuit training, whatever I could watch on YouTube. I tried to buy some dumbbells, but everyone was buying dumbbells. So couldn't get my hands on that. I ended up buying ankle weights, used them like twice. And I was like, absolutely not. And so I really just was, you know, doing what everyone else was doing, suffering during the quarantine. By the time fall came around in 2020, um, we were kind of like back into school and we were online, but the gym at our school opened up. So I was back at the gym and Chris is like, all right, it's time. We're going to the barbells. You're doing upper body day, all this stuff. So he helped me get a new plan together. And I started lifting like with free weights for the first time ever. So I'm squatting with the barbell. I'm doing deadlifts. I'm doing lunges. I'm doing step ups. I am doing bicep curls, lateral raises. I'm doing lateral pull downs. I was just like, what? But then I was starting to become addicted because I was seeing results so fast. I started in August of 2020. And by the time we got to like October or November, I feel like I looked significantly different. I was just so much stronger looking, had so much muscle and the thing was staying in. Okay. Like I can't lie. So I was like, oh my gosh, like what? Um, on top of that, I did learn more about the protein. And so then this is kind of where it's like, in hindsight, I'm cringing because it's like one of those things you learn on social media and then you don't really understand the signs behind it and everything. So you kind of mess things up. So I was just like, oh, I need to get in protein. So I started just being a protein fiend, any and everything that had protein, I was eating it. And I was like, I need to eat more. And like, Yes, I would be eating a lot of protein, but did you look at the sodium? Did you look at the fat? Did you look at the other like micronutrients? Like, no. And so the thing was staying but so was my stomach, okay? I was so bloated. I was drinking like two core powers a day. I was like, ugh, but I saw the results, right? So I was like, obviously it's working. Um, and so, yeah, I was putting on the weight and the muscle pretty fast. By the time I got around to spring 2021, um, thing was thinging, but my face was a little bit chubby. Um, stomach wasn't really that big. I think that now I hold weight there much more easily, but back then I still relatively had a fat stomach. You know, once my bloating went away, like I was, I was good. Um, and so yeah, that was pretty much the start um, of like my current fitness journey there. And I continue to lift and lift and lift. 
And yeah, with the beginning of that fitness journey also came my activewear obsession as well. So when I started working out more, I realized I actually need some more stuff to wear. Um, when I first was working out, even like in when I was a medical assistant and stuff like that and in undergrad, I would just wear like any old leggings. I had like a pair of Nike Pro. I had some like leggings from Forever 21, just like cotton, like black leggings. And I just wear that. And then when I started like working out with Chris and we were doing like all the things and I was having my upper body day, my lower day, I was like, oh, I need more clothes for more days. I can't do laundry like every single day. That's when I first uh, bought something from Alphalete. Chris had introduced me to Alphalete and I was like, oh, like this is really awesome. And then he was like, yeah, his partner, um, his girlfriend also has a brand as well. And I started checking out Buff Bunny collection. So in August of 2020, I made my first Buff Bunny collection purchase and I had been hooked ever since. Um, I remember the pieces that I got and I was like, this is really high quality. I love how the brand is like really girly as well. And I was just obsessed. Um, so that's how my activewear addiction started and my introduction to Buff Money collection. And so, yeah, in 2021, I was still just like on my fitness journey, working out. I moved to Dallas and I'm still lifting. And at this point, I'm just so even impressed with myself that I have still been consistent and interested in the gym. I was just like, is this going to just be something fleeting that I do? And then, you know, eventually like I don't care anymore, but I really liked it not only just because I was seeing results, but also because it felt great and I kept it up. So around this time, I'm like, gym girly, I'm getting all the things, I'm getting gloves, all the accessories, and it's kind of becoming my personality, and I'm posting a lot about it on my Instagram story, and then I'm like, people probably don't want to see this all the time, like, what the heck? So I decided to make a separate, like, private, like, secret, if you will, Instagram that was, like, my fitness outlet. I let a few friends follow it, and it was on private, and all I did in there was just document, like, some of my lifts, mostly gym selfies and my gym fits that I love. And that was about it. I never had any plans of making it public or anything like that. So just my friends were in there. When I was in Dallas, I posted in there. And then one day around closer to either the middle or end of the year, I decided to make my page public. And so I just decided to make it public and I was like, if you find it, you find it, but I'm not gonna promote it. I'm not gonna talk about it there. And slowly people like started to find it. I'd post stuff on there, still have no intention of trying to like blow up or be a content creator or do anything. I was just like, I'm entertained by following other people's fitness journey. So maybe someone else will be as well. And I really, really hope that people who I don't know decide to follow this page rather than people that do know. I didn't even tell my mom about it. And she saw it one day and started following me because it's just, I just felt shy. Um, and so, yeah, I was just there posting, documenting, and that's that. Then I moved back to Houston in January of 2022. And this is how we kind of get into how I became a Buff Money Collection athlete. So at the top of January 2022, I moved back to Houston from Dallas and I immediately became a member at Alpha Land. I did because it was close to my house. It just made sense. It was a gym that was like new and had a lot of young people. When I was in Dallas, I worked out at like a community center and there were a lot of old people or high schoolers. And I just stood out a lot, not only because I was the only black person there, but also because I'm the girl wearing like purple leggings and everyone else is a little bit more toned down. I'm wearing a sports bra and shorts and I just got a lot of attention that I did not want, especially from dads. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, Alpha Land will be more of a place with people like my age that are going to be wearing the same types of thing as me. So it was a no brainer that I became a member there. And so I specifically remember it was February of 2022. I'm doing leg day and in walks Heidi. And I'm like, oh, no, not the buff bunny. And I was like, well, it makes sense that she would be here. But I just didn't expect to like see her. And I was like oh my gosh, should I say something? And I was like, well, what would I even say? Like, 
hey, you're so cool. Like, so I was like, I'm not going to say anything. Like, that's just weird. But it was really cool that I saw her. So I finished my lift. And when I was done, she was still there. And I remember she was sitting on the turf by the mirror. And she was, like, on her phone doing something. And I was like, just, like, say hi. Like, what's the worst thing? Like, just say hi. So I was like, okay. So I went up to her and I was like, oh, hi. Like, my name's Megan. And I just want to say, like, I love watching your YouTube videos. And I really appreciate the brand The Funny. And, yeah, I really like all the pieces. You know, some, something like that. And she's like, oh, my gosh, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And then um, she says, yeah, I saw you working out earlier. You're, like, really strong. And I was like, <laughs> stop it. Me? Oh, my God. Um, she's like, yeah, I saw you, like, you were doing squats. So I was doing barbell squats, you know. Shout out to Chris for making me do that um, in grad school. And so, yeah, I was like, oh, thank you so much. And then she goes, do you model? And I was like, No. But, like, I could. <laughs> and then she was like, well, I'm always just, like, you know, scoping out girls at the gym and just trying to get new phases for our page. And, um, yeah, like, if you're interested, like, you know, I would love to, like, get your contact or whatever to, you know, maybe follow up. And I was like, yeah. So she started following me on Instagram. And she said, you know, we do things, like, really ahead in advance for, like, campaigns and stuff. You know, maybe a while from for you to hear from me, etc. You know, I just want to put that out there. And I was like, okay, no problem, whatever. So some months go by, I don't hear from her. And I like, darn, like, okay, like that was a cool idea. You know, nothing crazy. I didn't expect that just from me talking with her that I would get on with a brand or anything. That wasn't my intention. I quite literally just wanted to say hi to someone that I admired. Um, so yeah, months went by. I worked with two other brands and I learned a lot about establishing trust with your audience, like getting people to use your code and just content creation in general. And when January 2023 rolls around, I get a DM from Buff Funny Collection and they want to send me PR and do a two month contract with me to kind of fill out the vibes and see if we're a good match. And when I tell you, I literally screamed. I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, almost a year later, literally a year later, I hear from Heidi, February of 2022, I meet her. And then January of 2023, I get the DM. So literally 11 months later, we come back around. And at that point, I felt like I was much more ready for the opportunity than I would have been 11 months before because I had never worked with anyone before. And yeah, so of course, I work with them and we had a great two months and I was so worried. I was like, what can I do? What can I say to get them to want to extend the contract with me? And not only did they want to extend the contract with me, they asked if I wanted to come on as an exclusive athlete and I said yes. So I finished up my contract with the other brands and May 1st, I was on as an exclusive athlete. And I think it was just a really great match because I have been loving Buff Bunny Collection. And so even my audience had, they had been rooting for me and it just made sense. And so it's really great working with them because it's very authentic to me. I don't have to make up anything or try to convince my audience that I like something because they already know I do because I was promoting them way before. Um, and so it's just... It's just the, that alignment, right? I had probably around like 2,000 followers when I got on with Buff Bunny Collection and I'm just under 5K right now. So I'm definitely one of the smaller creators, but I appreciate that they believe in me and have given me this opportunity and I only look forward to continue to grow. So I have been working with them for over a year now and I'll be on as an exclusive athlete for a year this upcoming May and I've learned so much and I've had so many fun opportunities from you know going to the rodeo with them being invited to shoots being a part of their Instagram lives connecting with the uh, awesome people that work there and also some of the amazing other athletes as well that I've made friends with and it's just been a really fun experience that I would have never ever thought that I would have for myself um, but I've always said that from that second that I tried buff money collection i remember telling chris i was like they need someone like me on their team kind of just like joking like they need someone like me like i just feel like i mesh well with the brand don't you think and to think that i literally spoke that into existence like what 
And so here we are. Um, so yeah, that's literally the simple story of how I became a Buff Bunny Collection athlete. And you know, now the rest is history. As far as where I stand now with my fitness journey, right now with my fitness journey, I'm just pretty consistent. We're still doing the same things. I go to the gym four times a week like I was before. I have two upper and two lower body days. And recently I have been adding more cardio. I never did cardio at all when I was in grad school, like first starting my journey. So that's something I just recently added probably within the last six to eight months that I've kind of dabbled in trying to walk or do um, Stairmaster or something after my lift a couple times a week. I have kind of gotten in a slump in the more recent weeks just because I've done a lot of traveling and or was being sick or not feeling well. But overall, I'm still pretty happy with just my level of my fitness journey. I do enjoy going to the gym and it's been great. I have been um, experiencing a bit of like gut health issues. So I have switched up my diet a little bit. And so I'm really excited to see how me eating just a little bit I don't want to say healthier, but just eating a little bit better overall with getting my macro and micronutrients. I've been eating more fruits and veggies because I have been slacking on that. Um, so I've been switching up a little things to try to accommodate for my gut health. So I'm excited to see how some of those switches in my diet will, um, along with the way that I lived, how that will kind of, you know, flesh out with how I look. I will say that probably one of the main differences between how I feel now about my body and my fitness journey versus how I felt when I was first starting out is that I love, you know, glute growth. I feel like that's like mainly every girl's dream, you know. Um, I no longer want to sacrifice feeling uncomfy other part places in my body for the sake of trying to have this huge bum. But now that I'm older, I see where I tend to hold fat and I'm not really the biggest fan of it. It's in my face, it's in my midsection, it's very stubborn there. And I'm like, I'm not trying to do that anymore. I'm not trying to force myself to eat all of this food when I'm not, when I don't want to. And I feel like I'm starting to no longer chase having the largest backside of all time, which I know, I know. Um, and so I'm okay with taking it a little bit more slower, um, but I do want to lean out a bit. I want to see my six pack. There was a time where I was, I was seeing a visible core. Okay. Um, and then it was Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that stuff. Um, and so I kind of fell off, but I want to get back to that. And I feel like I'm just at a point now where I'm okay with having a little bit more of a leaner physique. And that is something that I'm trying to kind of achieve. So I've switched up some things there and I'll probably document that and bring that to YouTube and share that all with you. Um, let me know if you want to see a, what I eat in a day or a week of workouts or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I just have a bit of a different like mindset shift, but I will always, you know, owe the beginning of my fitness journey, of course, to chasing the glutes. And that's what got me here. But now I do appreciate a great back day. Like I think my back looks pretty cool. I can't lie. Like having muscles in your upper body is kind of lit. Like I never saw that for myself. But now that we're here, I'm like, it's kind of a vibe. So I love that for me. And yeah, it's been fun. So I hope you enjoyed listening a little bit about how I got started with fitness, how I ended up with Buff Funny Collection. And I'm super excited to keep going and take y'all along with me. So if you have any questions, leave them below in the chat. Let me know what other videos you want to see moving forward. But otherwise, that's going to be the end of this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Mwah.